what is going on guys welcome to another live stream okay so we're gonna do something a little bit different today um i know i'm from i'm actually in my studio right now so i got to the job this morning and i don't know if uh i i don't know if my service was not that great i, I think i had like one maybe two bars but like i tried to shoot this live stream this morning straight from the live right but the problem is too is that i can't um I, I'm not like I'm in the shop, right? So I can't hear like audio. I can't hear questions. I can't do anything. Like when I'm out in the field field, um, until like I get something else situated, like in my actual van, like there's no way for me to hear communications or the chat. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to try it a little bit different today. So I shot it as if I was shooting it live with the intent that maybe what I can do is I'll still do a live stream, right? I'm going to play the entire um the entire video which is like about two and a half hours so it's gonna be like you were watching it live right um i'll pop in and out if there's like super chats or something like that just give a shout out real quick here and there um, but i don't want to interrupt the audio that's going on in the video but then i'm still here available for questions within the chat as well so uh, I feel like if I, I, you know, this is all, this is something I've never tried before. So we're going to try it out and we're going to see if people like it or people hate it. I don't know. Um, but then this way I am available for chat. I am available to answer questions on the fly as we go and give shout outs to people. The only thing is, I don't know if I pop in and pop out while the video is playing. I don't know if that's going to be annoying, obnoxious to hear the video audio and myself speaking at the same time. Um, uh, so um so we're gonna just try it and see how it goes uh tint pro says yeah, you have to do wi-fi in your truck i do have wi-fi on the truck um and i, sh I should have given that one a shot i kind of was flustered the the only thing about the wi-fi in the truck is that the truck has to be running um for the wi-fi to work so which i guess it wouldn't really be that huge of a problem because i mean it's it's very efficient on gas so it would only be running for like two hours but it'd be just idling for two hours i don't know i don't know anything if that, that's really great for an engine or not it's a brand new van so um i gotta do a little bit more research so if that's an option then i'll go ahead and do that as well um so so yeah so this is what we're gonna do let me go ahead and move a couple of things i am gonna go ahead and pop in right down here just like that Maybe right here. I might pop in for super chats and just to say hi and such, but I'll mainly be in the corner. I mean, in the in the chat talking, and then that way people can um, people can uh, get the uh, you know still get the live stream experience and still watch. And then people that are you know sitting here watching it live, you're able to go ahead and uh, get your questions answered live as well. So, um all right so before besides that let's go ahead and get going and if you guys have any questions concerns uh hit me up in the chat i'll be there again super chat is active so for those of you guys that hit me up on super chat definitely appreciate it i'm gonna move this over just a hair because i am i noticed i'm i'm right in the way of that button hold on there's like a 10 second delay so You know what I'll do? I'll pop it up right here. And then I'll just pop in and out if I need to uh, during the live stream. So here we go. This again, this is from this morning. So if you see timestamps a little bit different here and there, that's what you're going to see. But this is, this is, this was recorded live. It is the whole process. So let's go ahead and try it and see how we do. All right, we're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another live stream. Uh, today we're going to be doing a 2020 Ford F Ford Mustang. Um, I'm on the road right now, so I am actually at a client's location here in the garage. So I don't have like audio, the, the chat. I'm just going to have the camera on my head, and we're just going to be doing our thing. Um, so I apologize. I, I won't be able to hear any super chats or any comments or anything else like that. Um, but uh, this is the best I have so far. I'm trying to tweak it so I can get a, you know a setup on the road that will allow me to do what I do when I'm at the shop or in the shop. But, uh, for the time being, this is, this is what it's going to have to be. So, uh, but at least you guys will see the new van set up. You will see, um, how I do everything on the road. Um, 
I have a plotter in the back right now. It's it's from the shop because we've been working mobily a lot. So um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get going. Hopefully the angle's good. I never wear my hat backwards, but about. I think last time I did this, I saw the brim of my hat. So I'm like, all right, let's just do it backwards. I'll keep this phone on me. There's my extra key. All right, so this is the uh, Ford Mustang we're going to be doing. Nothing too crazy. You're going to have to shrink the sides, of course. Um, do the install on the back. I do a little trick on the back install because these these uh, defroster lines, they kind of swoop like this. Um, so before the installation, during the cleaning process, I'll actually turn the car on and turn the defrosters on. And that way we just have to work uh, lickety split. All right, so this vehicle is getting, it's a new van by the way, all wrapped, all set. Um, yeah, uh, if you guys haven't seen the new van, let me show you here, boom. How sweet that puppy is, yeah. Big shout out to Window 10Z over in Orlando. They're the ones that uh, the, I sent it over there to go get it wrapped and they did a phenomenal job phenomenal job big thanks to david over there as well um and everyone else so uh looks pretty good i'd say it looks good oh and by the way if you guys are wondering this is is part of the the brand build that i did with kerry through uh, iron duck designs so um so yeah okay we're gonna be doing the legal limit so we're gonna do 30 30 15 a little windy outside a lot windy outside actually I'll see if uh, curious if it's gonna rain or not rain isn't in the forecast but we'll see I think that's one thing I learned about uh, precision cut. You have to be connected to uh, you have to be connected to an internet, or else it won't pull up the the stuff. So I've been having to um, like throw my my hotspot on. Okay, let's see here. Window tent, twenty twenty. Ford Mustang two door coupe. That's it. I had a pen. For, I have a pen for this, but I don't know what I did with it. Yeah, I left the pen at home by accident. Probably shouldn't have done that. All right, so that looks good. That's all set. Let's get the film going. 
There's tight quarters in here, y'all. Tight quarters. I mean, I am uh, I'm very lucky. I'm going to close this door because it's a little windy. Uh, I am lucky that I got this van. I, to be honest, I was completely, I was actually surprised that I got approved. Um, because this van is 28 grand, brand new. You know what I'm saying? Um, it is a little tight. If money was no object or whatnot, I probably would have just uh, gone for maybe, like the best case scenario would be like the high roof van, right? The full size high roof van. So I can stand up, I can walk around. It's got a lot more room. Um, but that, I mean, that thing's close to $40,000, brand new at least. Um, and, uh, so the low roof van I probably would have gone for, that was probably another $8,000 on top of, on top of what I paid here on the 28. It's like 33 or 36 or something like that. And I just know I wouldn't have been approved for that. So, but if money was no object and, um, and I had, I had the money to play through a business account or whatever, I probably would have at least. I at least got the next step up. I would have gotten like the full size van, maybe not the high roof, but the full size van. Cause then there definitely would have been more room. Like when I stack all the film options I have in here, plus the plotter, plus my tools, plus my, it gets packed in here. It gets packed. Just the film and the plotter itself takes up two thirds of the room. So, all right, let's see here. But beggars can't be choosers. I love this setup. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't love this setup. I'm just saying uh, it could be done a little bit better um, if if you have a little more money to play with. I am gonna go. I am gonna go ahead and do the doors first. And just like normal, um, I'll knock this out first. Cause every time I like, if I switch this to the 15 and then go cut out the back windows and the quarter windows, uh, when I go do the sides, I'm gonna I, like almost every time I'll mess something up where I have to redo it. So, <laughs> and I don't wanna do, I don't wanna like keep switching films back and forth. So. this and close this good to go you know and it does take a little bit longer um, In my opinion, it takes a little bit longer per job. You know, if you had a brick and mortar shop, it'd be different, you know, cause you can burn them and turn them. You got everything set up, um, but you have to do set up and breakdown for mobile jobs, which isn't that bad. You just gotta charge accordingly. You know, that's why some, you know, I, I have less overhead, but it takes me more time to do each job. So that's why I'm not a big fan. Some people say, you know, if you're doing mobile, since your business has less overhead, um, you should charge less and, and, and uh, you know, send the, send the savings down to your client. But really, it's like, it just takes you longer. This car in a shop setting, I could probably knock this car out in an hour. Yeah, I'd probably say close to an hour. And be comfortable with that here it'll probably take me a little bit more like up an hour like an hour and a half or something because i got to go into the van i got to cut the film it's just everything takes a little bit longer and uh you know and then on, on, on top of that i have to uh on top of that i have to you know i have to clean up afterwards but then i also have to get warranty paper together i have to take take and process payments you know, so being on the road just takes a little bit longer. I'll grab a handful of towels here, paper towels.
I really have to switch my tank out. This is the tank I used at the shop, but I really need to switch it out for, for my tint keg one. It's just a little longer. Plus it's a little cleaner. Like that one is like beat up and used and you know, new tint kegs always look a little bit better. People always ask what they are. What does that thing do? Now it is a little windy. I'm not sure how it could affect it. We'll see. So passengers should be on top. This is probably one of my one of my best tools in my pouch. Um, this is just like a dollar envelope opener. You know, it's got a blade, but it's safe everywhere else except for the blade inside. So especially when you're like cutting on cars or situations like this, you know, you could use your alpha knife. Um, but you you take the chance of like maybe cutting down there and cutting onto the on the car itself. It's just not a not a ideal situation. See right there, I can make that cut on the body of the car and not worry, not and know that I'll be just fine. It is a little windy. I'm gonna see if I can close one of these doors. Oh no. The Mustang is not clear. Nope. Stop, Jesus. That's the door with the Mustang, and the Mustang is not clear of the door. Thought that damn thing was gonna keep going down. All right, now we're clear. There we go. Now that reduces the light a little bit, um, but but it knocks down the wind a lot.
now, let's see if we can find a, a plug. I think I found one back here, actually. You know, I was doing this, I, I did a Mustang last week, and I was uh, just normally shrinking it, and it took forever, forever, and I don't know what was going on. I still got it, but it took just too much, too long. So the next time, the, the next window that I did, I actually, I pocket shrunk, so I went from the bottom like this, and then bring it up. A lot, a lot faster, a lot cleaner. And more uniform, definitely, when you're shrinking. Just get underneath it, shrink that bottom edge, and then bring that heat up. Boom, just like that. That's called a pocket shrink. Probably lifts this side up a little bit, do a little bit of a double snap. Yeah, but pocket shrinking like that is so much quicker than like shrinking from the top going down. It's going to Y. So then now you got to split, conquer and divide or divide and conquer. And then uh, shrink that film, uh, that finger down like that. A lot quicker to just pocket shrink some of these. See like this big finger right here? It's too big. Unmanageable. Spread it apart. Go. Take it from the bottom and then bring it up. Look at that. That is it for that one. Let me use this as my cleaning towel. Where is my, there it is. I forget what year Mustang it is, but there is a model of Mustang that you don't even need to shrink the sides. You just, you just put them in. It's amazing.
I'll tell you what, the lighting is definitely not ideal. I mean, I got two like little bulbs, two by uh, four bulbs, but it is overcast, so it makes it look a little dreary in here. And then I want to save the life on this towel, right? So I'm going to use my, my outside cleaning towel, grab that to wipe this down. Make sure we got no trash, no air bubbles. Try to wipe her down a little bit. She's not covered in drippies. There's something right there. Looks like an adhesive, like adhesive buildup or something. And it could be Residue from an old sticker. I did not see that. Oh, it's on on the glass itself. So let's go ahead and wet her down. Get my awful blade out. Go ahead and scrape that puppy off. Whatever it is. Just like that. Take my water. Wet it down. Let's get it back in place. Right as rain it is now gone. It used to be right there ish. I think what it was, I think it was adhesive from an old sticker. And that's what I got to get used to. I have to get used to doing that more. I need to, once I scrub, I need to put my hand and rub my hand on the glass itself before I do my clean, my squeegee for, for cleaning. Because if I rub my hand on it, I would have felt that. And even though it was literally took, what, 30 seconds to fix it? You know, it could be, it's better to be proactive than reactive. Or we can do it first. Feel for it. Feel some some stuff on there, but the scrub will get most of that. Scrub here. What I forgot to do is take my blade, an awful blade right in here because you could have some stuff right in here now this is a 2020 so most likely not but the older vehicles like steps like that is, is necessary for the older vehicles or else um, you could have some sort of grit and grime or something in there the older they are the more you have to clean your cleaning process needs to be much better
Opa. Don't trip now. Put that over there. Pick that up in a minute. Now, if the client comes out here and wants to walk around and look while I'm doing that, then I will inform them to watch out for the, the liner. They step on that liner, they're on their ass. Almost guaranteed. Uh, my slip was so good. My slip solution was so off last week. Like, way off. Like, I had back windows that... Uh, that I was like setting and then once I had it all laid I, I couldn't even move it. I was like fighting with it like you wouldn't believe It's a decent cut You don't have any crazy things. I try to keep my my edge Between a sixteenth and an eighth No bigger than an eighth though An eighth is a little too big If it's bigger than an eighth then at that point I just I'll either adjust it on the plotter or resize it myself or hand cut it. I'm not splitting hairs. And you know, and some people do like shaving edges or getting that super super close. It's like I don't like I don't see like I understand for people that are like really love what they do. And don't get me wrong, I really love what I do, but I don't see the ROI. Like it's not like a huge, like, wow factor. It's just, it is what it is, I think. So, but those of you that, sh I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, that shave every edge and, and, and whatnot and have pride in that. And I'm not like taking away from you on it. It's just ain't my, it ain't my cup of tea. I don't see, I don't see the uh, benefit in it. So I typically don't do it. All right. Both windows are done. Very nice. Now some detailers would cringe at watching me wipe this car down like this, especially on a black vehicle. Um, but I'm not destroying anything. <laughs> Let me clean this up. And put this down. All right. All right, roll up doors down and complete. Looks good. Let me check the battery on, on here. 52%, we're good. I never wear my hat backwards, but like, I'm wearing it more backwards Alligator obviously because I'm tent super chatted $1 shooting. For the save. Okay, so those are good. I don't think I'm going to have it much wind on the back end here. So I'm going to go ahead and open the doors, give myself a little more light. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that back down and then apply my DSP. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing okay through these uh, crazy times. All right, so this towel I've been using to wipe down, but it's starting to get a little moist. Uh, I'm a firm believer in that like towels have a lifespan per job. Like, so those are done. Like I'll go back and wash them. They'll, they'll be put into the wash, but I won't use those anymore because they're just a little too wet now. It's a little too wet, a little too dirty. Got my DSP. Let me go ahead and apply it.
So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it first. That way it, get, it has time to, to air dry while I cut the back window and the rest of the film for the vehicle. It's really not that hot today. Probably 70, 75 maybe. So uh, normally, like in the middle of the summer, the dry shrink prep will dry damn near instantly. Damn near instantly. But if you see these, like there's water still from the edge on the edges from when I sprayed it down to initially wash it. Um, so I like to clean that up because my film will touch those edges and the DSP might be dry, but those edges are wet. So it'll stick, it'll stick to there instead of float and glide. So now we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that right here. <laughs> this is my new cleaning towel now, so I'll just put it right up there. And let's go ahead and switch films over to the 15. In Florida, the legal limit is 30% on the front, 15 on the back end. So that's what we're going to do now. That's 30. Looking good. See if we can get this tape. Boop. Oof, it is windy. Yeah, and for those of you guys that are looking to get a setup like this, I did learn something. So right here, I used to have an air compressor, a small little air compressor, like an eight gallon one or something, very tiny, no big, no big, right? The problem is like when I'm doing back windows, like it'll cut and then it'll come back and it'll feed back here. And if anything is underneath this area, the two sides of the film, the film and the film side will touch. And when film and film side touch, they stick together. So it was literally like, it was binding up the film and, uh, and like destroying back windows. So I thought I could save some space and put something underneath the plotter just to be a little bit more efficient with, with the space, uh, but that did not work. So save yourselves a little frustration and a little bit of film and don't put anything on the back end underneath the plotter like the front end you can you can control that you can hold that back end you can't really do anything about it all right clear nest let's do this actually let's do the back the back quarters the back quarters don't need to be cut I mean shrunk so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it I don't particularly like this new program that Lumar has it's more difficult um, it auto nests very it doesn't the other the other program the version 4 auto nested like very I guess this is efficient but like it's not it's not very good for a workflow you know what I'm saying I'd rather lose like 5% efficiency in film and uh, and have a better workflow like when I try to pop these two windows together it'll like here look hold on let's just do the front windows you see how it, how it wraps it quarterly like that I mean it wraps it one on top of the other like this now I have to cut the bottom cut the top and then cut these cut the tops in the middle right here individually whereas if I had it this way where the bottoms are basically butting each other i can get these close enough where i just have one cut here versus two i mean it doesn't seem like a lot but it does save on time let's go ahead and cut oh it might be might be helpful if i load the film <laughs>
And the easy, yeah, and the editor is kind of weird on this one. Like on the previous version, you could pick us an entire side and then move the side of the window or the side of the, the film, whatever side of the thing that you're cutting um, and move it in one side. But, uh, but this one, it like puts like a thousand points. Let me see if I can show you. Let's say, let's say this, this was too short right here. The back end was a little too short and I need to lengthen it. If I go to edit, see, and then edit, I'd have to go down to edit path. And now look at all these individual markers before on the version four, you would just have one marker right in the middle and you move the entire thing like this one. Now, if I move it, I have to move every single one individually. Now, granted, I could pick a whole side, I guess, and move it out, but then I got to be very, I got to be very careful that I don't like how, like it's a box, right? So I just need this side, but if I box it, I get the top end too, which means now I'm adjusting the top end, which I don't want. So it's not very efficient in regards to trying to edit patterns right here. This is the passenger side. I'll put it right here. And let's cut the driver's side. Tell. This chair can get moved, so I'm done with that. I can move this scrub back here because that's where I'm going to use it. Clean. Oh, the liner side or film side? Film side. All right. 
So I dropped it. Look, there's all kinds of hair and stuff on it or whatever. Because you're going to separate the plastic from the plastic. Um, well, obviously you want to make sure that the film isn't damaged, which it's not. It just hit the ground. But now it has contamination all over it, right? So you want to just wipe it off. Because the static cling, the second I release this liner, the static cling will, will try to draw any of those hairs and contaminations right to the adhesive. Hello. Hi, I just had a Yeah, come on out. Get the doors done. Working on the, the little windows right now. Wow. Last one's gonna be the back window, so. Yeah, that's the big one. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So, um, when he, Evan said cash, does cash mean cash cash or cash check? Cash. Cash cash. Cash cash, yes. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to double check. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cash is king in these trying times. Got it. Perfect. Very nice. So to me, this towel is still clean, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it down there anyway. It's gonna be a new one for the uh, the back window. It's gonna be fresh for the back window. I'm rolling these forward because it's a small space in here. And um, when my knees are bent and my knees are on the seat, my feet will hit the back of these chairs. And since they're black, they'll leave brown shoe marks. So I try to bring them as far, far forward as I can, give me a little bit of room and Gives me less to clean up at the end. You will see me do a reverse roll um, on this one, just because I don't Frankenstein, because trying to Frankenstein a coupe, trying to get through that little hole with no arms, and I'm damn near six foot, 200 pounds, like it's not easy for me. So a reverse roll is so much better. Before that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my battery here. 29%. Let me switch the battery and then, uh, and yeah. hold on.
Yeah, I'm gonna hundred percent. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and cut out the back window. In a better setup, I should probably have all those wires underneath here and have these film boxes over there. That way they're not in my way right now. I'm gonna keep the top long here, um, just because for some reason when I've been doing Mustangs lately, the tops have been giving me problems. When I cut it short, if, if, if like it almost binds. So I'm gonna pause it right now because the wind is freaking with me. And look, the film is kind of binded a little bit. So I'm gonna try to rectify that right now. There you go. So, and that was due to like the little bit of wind coming in this way. So crinkle here, a crinkle, it's a little bit. It should be fine because when I shrink it, uh, it should shrink out. Yeah, it looks like there's like a tiny little crinkle right here, but it's not a crease, it's a crinkle. So, I'll be able to go ahead and just heat that out and we should be good to go. The little things you gotta look and keep an eye out for when you're mobile. Oh, no. Dang it. A little adhesive. It's all right. It's all right. Let's gonna push it back in. <laughs> So one thing I definitely do have is a blade eater. That way I don't break any blades off on the ground here. If you're doing mobile stuff, yes. And if you're doing um, flat glass, it's imperative. I've seen some outfits that just willy nilly throw blades on the ground and then like they're like, oh yeah, I'll just pick it up. I'll get it with all the other trash and then they forget. And then you end up getting a bad review because the owners that have little dogs or little kids find three or four that could have been buried in their kid's foot and then now you could have a potential lawsuit or just a, you know, best case scenario, you just have like a god awful review. Be a professional, make sure you manage your blades. So right here is where I start getting bound up, right? But if but there's a lip on top of this. Let me see if I can show you. This lip right here um, will hold the film up and won't lay it down in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the film away around here. Just like that. And it still leaves me this tab to pull the film and manipulate the film. Thank <laughs> you. 
For those of y'all that are curious, this is the this is a Lumar CTX. We don't carry the IRX um, because we're a Formula One dealer, so we have Pinnacle. So it's like really not no need for us to carry the IR stuff. So CTX used to be the highest ceramic that they had within the Lumar lineup. But now that's all changed now with IRFX. So right here is where I've been getting bound up. So that's where this tab really helps me pull that film in the proper direction. Yeah, without that tab, it'll want to come this way versus up and out. One trick too, that when people are doing the pull method and that they, they mess up on is you just wanna keep it close to the glass but pull in the direction of the film. Some people wanna lift and pull and that's wrong because when you lift the film up off the glass, it melts a lot quicker. It burns a lot easier. So you end up ruining a lot of film a lot, a, a lot faster. So you're just pulling in the, in the right direction. You don't want to lift. And see right here again, if I didn't have this tab, like this would this would be a little bit of work for me. Which is I have this tab. Let me go ahead and lift it, heat it, and start working it. Start working it to my advantage. There we go. Just like that. All right, so hopefully this will be the last time I need this. So put that right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut a quarter inch border. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just outside um where the patterns cut 
because I'm, I'm going to weed this on the glass right here because I don't have a peel board, but I'm still going to do a reverse roll. So I'm going to weed this on the glass right here. And I'm going to show you and then that way I don't have like crazy amounts of liner. The bottom's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting my stuff ready. Here's gonna be my fresh towel, my scrub, my bulldozer, my cleaner, and a couple squeegees, a couple installation squeegees. I have my hand scrum already in there. So now all the stuff I need to install is ready. What I'll do now is I'll go ahead and weed it first. And at this point, you could just like break it if you want and then kind of go this way and then come back the other way around, or you can hold it all together. It doesn't matter. Now that's all weeded. I, whenever I reverse roll, um, I reverse roll from left to right. So that means you roll up from left to right. So in the, uh, in the spirit of efficiency, obviously you want to roll the left, the right side first, because you go roll the left side, then the right side, then you got to walk back to the left side. But if I start on the right side and I wet it on the right, then I go and end on the left and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to roll right then and there and I don't have to move to the other side of the car. This method works well also if you're going to be um, mobily doing front windshields. You know, the process is just a little different when you don't have a peel board. Now from here, you wanna make sure the second half, you don't pull because it's not really tacked on that side. So you can literally just yank the liner off. So I'm gonna start rolling on the left side and I'm gonna actually roll from the bottom left corner and kind of upward, not like at a full diagonal, but it's slightly upward. And that helps when you, when you are loading the film in. Because if you go just straight across, it'll actually bind on itself and it won't roll in there easily. So you can go right about there in the far reach and then just lift up. Pretty tight reverse roll right there. And I won't reverse roll it all the way because if I reverse roll it all the way, it'll actually start to unwind and expose the, the film. So what I'll do is I'll stop it right about here, about six inches a foot and I'll put it right here where I'm going to need it. And I'm going to leave it right there. Now, this is the beautiful thing. When you reverse roll, it gives you the opportunity to go ahead and clean the glass. That way, when you're installing, you know that if you see something, it's not because it's, it's like there's still DSP or something on the other side. Um, you know it's on the inside. When you're first starting, when you're first starting to install, the best thing to do um, is to clean the outside like this first before you start cleaning the inside because the inside is gonna have I can see it right now There's smudges and stuff on the inside um, So you want to make sure you get all those smudges off, but you want to have a clear um, A clear view of that You know if there's water on the other side then it kind of impedes your your vision and maybe you think it's on the other side Or maybe you don't even see it at all 
the smudge on the inside. So all clean. All right, we're all set on the inside. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do this. I am going to go ahead and start the car now because I need to start the car for the defrosters, the rear defrosters to turn on. But what can you do? We'll move this puppy over here. And you see these these downward defrosters? I'm gonna try to get you as good as I can. Um, this is why we turn the defrosters on. Because if not, that more their moisture will go down. Uh, just because of gravity the way it is, it'll pull up and then want to go down those defrosters. So the best method I found is to turn the car on and then to turn the defrosters on. Some people want to use alcohol. Some people want to use, you know, scrape it with a with a with a plastic blade. You know, there's. I've tried it all. You know, and I haven't had any luck on the other other ones. I did see Matt clean a back window with a uh, with a clay bar, which he said got a lot more stuff off the back window. So that would be interesting. I don't I don't I think it's a little bit of overkill for like a standard back window, but for like challengers, chargers, uh these Mustangs, like vehicles that are that are known for like peanut issues, I think that might be that might be interesting to see how that would affect it. Dang it's cramped back here. So I'm squeegeeing enough, far enough, but I'm not gonna be able to go down there. And I could reach down there if I jam my hand in here, but you wanna squeegee far enough and not have your hand touch the glass as you're squeegeeing. Cause you don't want to, your hand to introduce any contamination. Get my bulldozer in here for the very last part. here you know some people use the whale tails and such i've never used a whale tail it could work it could work but i've just i've used the the bulldozer for so long as and it works for me the only thing with the the auto bulldozer is that you have to be careful is because if you if you squeegee the glass dry, the the white blade, whatever the blades are made out of, it'll streak onto the glass. Kind of like if you had like a black shoe on a, on a basketball court. Same thing, same concept. All right, wet. Let me go ahead and grab my film now. Whew. Now I'm gonna finish rolling it. And then start to unroll. I want to get a couple feet out, a foot or two out, so I can get it started. And the glass is warm, so you kind of you have to have a slipper, a little bit more of a slippy solution, and you got to work a little bit quicker because it will start to tack a little faster than than normal. Notice the top. I don't touch the, the top. The top. I just let it dangle. I don't. I don't push it all the way up yet because 
I gotta still push it down. The bottom of the film, the bottom of the film is just above, probably an inch or so above. Cover in the bottom. No light gaps on top and bottom. We go right as rain, ladies and gents. Let's get all the big bubbles out. Let's go ahead and wet her down. Squeeze her off. Start from the center. Just go all the way to the edge. Make sure you push all the way to the edge. That's the most important thing. When I try to push with these vehicles, I try to push like with the defroster lines. Because sometimes if you go over the defrosters, you'll get like, you'll trap bubbles and whatnot. Look, see right here, I didn't push all the way to the edge, right? So like now I'm gonna go ahead and push all the way to the edge. You gotta squeegee through through the edge because if you go just close to the edge, then your your the film will wanna like suck suck back up a finger, and then when that finger sucks back up, um, it could suck up trash that's back there. Right it. Get my bulldozer. Start from the center out, try to squeegee out from the center out. I hope this angle is good. It's either, this angle is either working or it sucks horribly. And you're just like looking at the back of the seat. Right. Now down here at the bottom, Right here, I can't get my bulldozer in there, right? But the film is tucked behind there because uh, it's basically the pillar is touching the glass. So come up here, get your bulldozer underneath the pillar here and then drive it down. That's a good tip for you. All right, all right, she's installed. Let's turn the car off. Let me go ahead and get my, my glass cleaner. Oh, you know what? After install, take a towel and always bump the edges. Jesus, I almost forgot that step. Always bump the edges. Because then you can push out any last remaining moisture that might be at the edges and try to seal that edge shut. And if you see any fingers or anything like that, it typically helps to push them out. Got a finger right here. So let me see if I can just... Give it, a little, give it a little love. There we go. A little force. Just go a little harder. A little bit of a power stroke, if you will. Lay that finger down. Don't forget, automotive window film uses a pressure sensitive adhesive, right? Um, flat glass film, commercial residential film, typically is a clear dry adhesive. That's why if you ever tried to do a drop technique with automotive film, it won't work unless you have like a wooden stick, something heavy to drop it down. Like you'll see, <coughs> you'll see flat glass guys do the drop technique. And then when auto guys try to do it, they don't realize that the adhesive is different. It won't allow them to do it. So my point of saying that is, is that a pressure sensitive adhesive, it might just need a little more pressure. There might just be a little bit too much moisture in there, in a finger. So you just need to push a little harder, squeeze a little bit more of that moisture out and then uh, help that adhesive adhere a little bit better. But uh, that's it. I'm gonna clean up here. If you're a sweaty guy, if it's really hot, um, if, the, if, the, if it's not temperature controlled, um, during the summer times and whatnot, I would suggest to throw a towel back here because you don't want because you don't want your legs to be sweating up and then like getting in the chairs and whatnot. So, oh, the breeze feels good now. Let's take a look. Ooh. 
Money, baby. Money, all day. All day. All right, that's it. gonna conclude it all for today's live stream, but not live stream. I live, but not live. So again, um, if in the event, I, I'm trying to go live all the time, right? But if I can't go live, then I guess then, then this is better than nothing, I guess. So, uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh, found a little, you know, got some information in regards to it. Classic mobile, that happens to me all the time with random stuff. Yes, yes. Forgetting, uh, forgetting stuff is like, crazy i even mentioned it you know what i also realized in this video i mentioned that i should have said something about the front the, the driver's seat being moved and i totally forgot to do that so i think what i'm gonna put together is some sort of like um like like a checklist of sorts that way i can go through the checklist as i go because there's so many different little things um especially when you're just getting your feet wet and you're just you know learning to fall into a groove mobily uh, you just want to make sure that everything is uh, is solid so um so yeah uh you know what i got a couple minutes i thought this was gonna be two and a half hours but it isn't two and a half hours um window tinting life thank you very much uh alligator window tinting thank you again tint stuff matt thank you very much for being in here um i'll give it a couple minutes two minutes if you guys had any questions concerns i think a lot of people left but um at one point we had like 28 29 people in here a couple people from russia that was really cool so um yeah i think that's it i think we're gonna be good all right, so thanks. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one. Be safe, and I will catch on the next time. I am I am doing my Tuesday night live stream tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern, um, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, shoot the shit then and uh, do some Q and A's or whatever. So thanks, and we'll talk to you soon.